Pass it back. Hello everybody, it's Kenning, and it's the last Paladin video of the month. So that means we've got a custom deck to go over, right? Now I kind of started an idea last week, and if you watch that video, uh, well let's face it, 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 it was terrible. That deck just couldn't work. I had some what I thought were good concepts, but I just couldn't get them to, to work together well. So I had to completely scrap it, throw it out, and this is what I came up with instead. It's a straight up control late game paladin deck called the Healing Shield. And as you might surmise by the title, there's a lot of healing and uh, there's a lot of divine shields in it. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this, I'm going to go straight into the gameplay and show you how it works. But a quick rundown, Blessing of Wisdom is here for card draw. Argent Squire, two of them because you need some one drops and because they've got the Divine Shield. Equality's there to help you clear the board. A Holy Light's there because that's the healing part of this deck. Two Argent Protectors because it's a 2-2 two, two for two and it's got the Divine Shield aspect. Blood Mage Tholonos, he's really only here for card draw and another two drop. If you can get that spell damage, that's awesome, but don't count on it. Uh, Loot Hoarders, two of them for card draw and uh, your, your two drops. Eldor Peacekeepers, that's uh, your three drop as long as bringing your attack down to one. Two Blood Knights because when we run Divine Shields we want to try to get a Blood Knight with at least uh, a 6-6. Six, six. Don't try to go any higher, don't get real greedy. 6-6 six, six is perfectly fine for three mana. Two True Silvers because they're staples and never heal it in deck. Um, and this is kind of a, a heal it in deck if you will. Um, Two Consecrates, because that's your board clear, especially with equality. Two Hammer Wraths, more card draw. Uh, your Senjin Shield Master, that's kind of an intermediary taunt, because you take a lot of damage up front in this deck. And that's okay, but you need some way to stave off some of those uh, rush decks. Faceless Manipulator, copy whatever. Stampede and Kodo, a lot of value in those uh, low attack minions. Avenging Wrath, one of those. One Karen Bloodhoof, two Guardian of Kings. Heavy minion, plus you get a heal aspect. Lay on hands, amazing card draw, uh, as well as uh, restoring 8 health. Tyrion Fordring and an Alexstrasza. Alexstrasza, of course, is a setup for one of your win conditions, which is why we're not concerned about damage in the beginning, because we have it in the end. And Tyrion Fordring because, well, he's just freaking awesome, right? Alright, let's get into some gameplay, and then I'll try to cover some more of this and how it plays out. All right, so uh, looks like it's going to be a druid, and uh, it's a it's a pretty consistent, stable deck. So this should be a, a good a good test of our uh, our control. We have no options. <laughs> so you want to mulligan aggressively for your ones and twos. Um, your ones being your argent squire, that's pretty much it, and then your twos being your loot hoarders. Um, even your Argent Protector is okay. Your three drops like Eldor Peacekeeper and Blood Knight are, um, you, you treat them as a 3-3 three, three for three. Uh, but you want to, there's only four of these in the deck, four three cost cards. So you, you want to throw those away if possible and try to go for those ones and twos. Um, because they both have benefit mid to late game, so they're not really a good starter card. This will be a ramp druid it looks like. I have not tested this deck against a Ramp Druid deck, so I'm kind of excited about that. There's one of our two drops. Just in time, top decking for the right cards. Um, this is our removal. This is our mass removal cards. So we don't really need that right now. Um, so I could play an Eldor Peacekeeper. The Loot Hoarder is going away either way. Um, I'm going to have probably a lot of heavy minions to play against with this Ramp Druid. So I'm actually going to save both my Eldor Peacekeepers for right now. Uh, if the situation dictates later, we'll use it. But for right now, on a Harvest Golem, I think we'll, we'll get by with uh, one extra damage from him. Making them uh, a 1 3 from a 2 3 really isn't all that great of a benefit. I mean, granted, it gets a 3 3 on the board, but that's an easy wrath target for a druid. We can also destroy him with our Stampeding Kodo should we get to turn 5 and he's still on the board. This deck uh, takes a lot of patience, I will say. Um, it can work, it does work. But you really have to be patient and think out your plays several turns ahead to make sure that you know what's coming from your opponent. Um, and then the deck has the counters and the ability to 
most importantly, the ability to heal to keep you in the game until your end game. Um, yeah, again, I'm not seeing... Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, get rid of this and we'll bring it down to a 2-1. Turn 5, turn 6, that's when we're going to start seeing some of the bigger minions drop out. And uh, our answers are things like Equalities, stamp. well, Stampeding Code is probably not going to help us too much. <clears throat> it will take this out. Another cool trick that you can do uh, if you have 8 mana is to Aldor Peacekeeper and then Stampeding Kodo. That works on pretty much anything. <clears throat> So actually, what we're going to do here is we're going to use our Blood Knight and get rid of that 2-1. Now, sure, you can try to be greedy and you can try to get 9-9 or 12-12, um, but 9 times out of 10, if you try to wait for that combo, you're going to fail or it's not going to help you win the game, even if you do manage to pull it off. A 3 mana 6-6 six, six is absolutely great, and there's no reason why you shouldn't just take the first Divine Shield you can and take it. If your opponent is playing more than one Divine Shield, that's an extra bonus for you. Like, wow, just right there. <laughs> that would have been some great value. Now, I do have another Blood, uh, blood Knight in here, so. Um, what we can do is, uh, let's see, 6 mana... We can, uh, we can essentially neuter both of these with our Eldar Peacekeepers, um, which might be a good... Let me think. I fight. Because we're down to 17, I think it's the right play. Uh, and we will remove one of these because there's going to be things like Mark of the Wilds and things. We don't want taunts on these on these minions, so we need to control the board as much as possible. We definitely need our Guardian of Kings next turn. Uh, 20 is when you want to start healing back up. Every time you get down to about 20, try to heal back up and, and ride that roller coaster. Oh, now that's an interesting trick right there. If you notice, the Eldor Peacekeeper had it to a 1-2. By silencing it, it does effectively go up to a 4-2. Unfortunately, this is a good Guardian of King's turn, but we have our Consecrate, which allows us to... Hmm. Yeah, we can't clear everything if we don't... Well... I, we're going to have to wait on the Guardian of Kings, unfortunately. No, no, no we don't, no we don't, no we don't. The only other option we really had there was to use our Consecrate. Uh, this Blood Knight would have allowed us to push six to his face, but we're not concerned about damaging the opponent, remember, because we have Alexstrasza, and although we would have cleared the board and we would have had a 6-5 on the board, we would have had uh, six less health, and that's pretty dangerous against a Druid, especially if he's got a Savage Roar or uh, any token combinations in his deck. Uh, we really need to keep up as high as we can. Uh, we're probably going to drop another Guardian of Kings, to be honest with you, to get ourselves back up. Yeah, see, now there's a Savage Roar. That would have killed us last turn. Hmm. I think we'll play conservative for now. 
we'll take care of that. We'll heal ourselves back up to 25. That gives us a little bit of breathing room. Um, none of the other removal options really worked all that great. We do have our Equality Consecration. That's an amazing six mana board clear. Remember, however, <laughs> it hurts your minions. And having two Guardians, uh, Guardian of Kings on the board uh, down to one health is, gosh, it's such a, a waste of that card. So use these for removal first before you try to pull off that combo. We haven't cycled a lot of our cards, actually. We're, we're still at 18 in our deck. There's a lot of card draw in here, and we just haven't really been... Oh boy, what's he gonna do? Removal? Straight up removal? Interesting. And the board's clear, all right. Fair enough, I think I like our option right here. Wasn't quite expecting that, but playing it now is about the best value we're going to get because he cleared the board for us. That's a perfect time to play Alexstrasza. And, you know, don't really need to be too upset about that because she did her job. She brought him down to 15. It would have been nice to push in another 8 damage. We don't need that. And these both have your, uh, your, your res sickness, if you will. So we can clear these. Uh, or do I want to clear them? Yeah, I think, well, so this is a tough decision because I don't have a lot of board clear left. Um, so if I use my Equality Consecrate now, there's no telling what he might drop. Uh, both my Elder Peacekeepers are gone, so that doesn't combo with the Stampede and Kodo. So it's debatable. I think I'm actually going to run the risk just removing one. Uh, I'm going to put Blessing of Kings on the Yeti, and I'm actually going to take a chunk of damage out of the opponent to heal myself back up, because I expect to take 4 damage from that Yeti. Uh, so it's kind of a trade-off. I want the card draw, but I'll take a little bit of damage for it. As long as I keep my board clear, uh, this just gets more and more value the more minions he plays. We really need to dig into our deck. We are behind in card draw. So let's see if he attacks with the Yeti. Okay, so we get some card draw out of it. Yeah, here's a Tyrion. That might be enough, honestly. I don't want to push it any further, I don't think. Um, yeah. That gives us... Okay, so here we go, here we go. Uh, we're going to Tyrion next turn. And uh, we got that as well. That's kind of nice. Let's go ahead and remove those Yetis. Let's get them out of the way. Got them down to four. Now, <clears throat> depending on... I wouldn't necessarily call Tyrion a win condition card. He, he's... He can? Um... Uh, there we go. So the Kodo is going to get some value. So let's see. That that turn was fairly self-explanatory. The next turn, however, I'm not sure about. Uh, we're kind of have to see what he plays. I don't really. Scenarius isn't the best faceless manipulator target. So, looks like he's going to clear out the Coda with Scenarius then. Ah, Drew of the Claw, okay. I think we might actually Tyrion here, we'll see. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and Tyrion. Now, depending on what happens here, 
Um, Tyrion's not going to stand with his Divine Shield. Uh, if he did, that would be an amazing faceless target. Um, it's probably not going to happen, so what we might wind up doing is using our faceless on the Druid of the Claw next turn, um, because he's going to work really hard to remove these. And we need to get rid of that taunt so that we can push in our last five damage. We still have our Avenging Wrath in here, so that might also help us out. Throw some heals. Nope, he's going for card draw. Okay. We do still have a Blood Knight in here. Now, it's debatable whether or not you want to take the Divine Shield away from Tyrion. But I doubt either of these are going to last. That's an interesting use of swipe. Okay. That has me a little concerned. We do have a healing touch in here. Um, interesting, interesting, interesting. So what I think I might do, actually, because he allowed us to do this, is go ahead and... This normally does not happen. Now, of course, I'm showing this to you because it's... Uh, awesome. <laughs> but that normally does not happen that you're able to use a Faceless on Tyrion. Um, that probably... Probably cost him the game. Now, I don't think he had too many options. I don't know what's in his deck. But having two Tyrions on the board... Um, interesting. Black Knight. Very well done. All right. Fair enough. But we do get an Ashbringer out of that. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. So, we're kind of... Uh, We, we still have lethal. Yes, okay, we still have lethal. Uh, what we do is we five to Cenarius, uh, then we Tyrion to here, and then we have two, three, four. So that's our win condition. Just thinking it through, sorry, I wasn't trying to BM you. So this is the, uh, the healing shield deck, and it's faring okay at rank five. Can I take this to Legend? I don't know. Uh, to be honest with you, I may wind up switching over to uh, a Druid of, of sorts. But uh, I'm going to keep playing and see how it works. Let me know what you think in the comments below. This is the last Paladin deck of the month because next month we're going to Viewer's Choice. That's right. There's a link in the straw poll, or a link to a straw poll right there. Uh, I want you to go ahead and tell me what class I should be featuring next month. Uh, as it stands right now, comments are pretty heavy for the mage, but I've also had some requests for rogue too. So go ahead and click on that straw poll link. Let me know what you want to see next month, and I will see you next time.